I just want to start, uh, I guess, by asking how you feel about what's going on in this country. I keep telling our people in Pakistan that this would not even have made news here. You know, the, in, in, in time of COVID-19, uh, Prime Minister having a, a, a drinks get together after work would not even have made news here. Because we also, unlike the rest of the world, we also had to cope with COVID-19 and all the restrictions. So, you know, here people can't understand what's going on, but I understand, and I, in one way, this is one thing which I feel that the reason why British parliamentary system works, whereas apart from uh, non-Anglo-Saxon uh, countries, it doesn't work because of the very high uh, level of moral standards you expect from your leadership. Uh, so, it, unfortunately, it doesn't work in other countries where they do not have the level of moral standards that you, you expect from your parliamentarians. Right. I mean, I think the, the issue here really is not about partying. It's about the hypocrisy and double standard of a prime minister who himself was fined by the police for breaking his own lockdown rules. And over 80 of his own Downing Street staff were also fined by the police. And it's the brazen double standard of a group of people that were ordering the British public not to go, even go and see dying relatives, dying from COVID in hospital. They couldn't do that. And at the same time, the people making those very draconian rules were brazenly breaking them themselves. I think that's the issue. What stood out in Britain was the high level, I repeat, of moral standards you mm. expect from your leadership. In Pakistan, you know, the vote of no confidence against me, which took place, the whole country knew that the going rate to buy my parliamentarians was a million dollars. So, I mean, if you compare the two, uh, that's why, you know, in my opinion, and I keep telling them of my experience in British uh, 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 of Parliament, that unless we raise our level of morality to what you have in Britain, parliamentary democracy will not work. If, you, if all it takes is to buy 20 of your members of Parliament to switch sides and a government falls, it, 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 in fact, it, the whole concept of democracy or parliamentary democracy then gets challenged. So, you know, from, Brit from your point of view in Britain of what I know, I understand that you expect from your leadership the standards, you expect them to lead by example. It's been very volatile since you were deposed. Uh, you vowed to come back and fight again. You think you're going to win with a bigger majority, I believe. But one issue that's come up in the last few days is that there appears to be a serious threat of assassination against you. And I have to say, the last leader of Pakistan I spoke to was Benazir Bhutto, and it wasn't long after I met her that she was indeed assassinated. So this is a very serious risk that you all face, I think, when you lead a country like Pakistan. What do you know about these threats? How seriously are you taking them? Well... Piers, what happened was that this was clearly a conspiracy. And, uh, you know, I've spoken about the conspiracy because, you know, I came to know about it about six months before I actually, uh, before this vote of no confidence took place. And, uh, you know, all the time I thought it wouldn't succeed. You know, for some reason I thought that uh, it's not possible that, you know, the conspiracy was to replace me by the guys who for 30 years had been in power, the two uh, families, and there were massive corruption cases against them. 60% of the cabinet that has replaced me is on bail, or billions of rupees of corruption cases. So my mind just wouldn't accept that, it, would it be possible to replace our government, which, was, which had finally recovered from all the two years of crises and was on, on the way up? I just didn't think it would be replaced by these criminals. So the, those who sort of planned this whole thing uh, are a bit worried now because they don't want me back. They didn't take me out to get me back in again. So that's when I, uh, got, uh, I found out that they had uh, planned this final solution. But you were known, Imran, as a, as a, on the cricket field, you were known as completely fearless. No opponent ever put fear into you. But when you're a political leader and you're in the situation that you're in now, uh, where there's a, a genuine threat against you of assassination, do you feel fear? 
No, you know, Piers, I, at his, well, when I entered politics, I actually had conquered my fear of dying. Otherwise, I would not have uh, entered politics because I came in to stand up against the entire status quo. I came, came to fight corruption. Today, the entire political spectrum, 16 parties on one side and I'm on the other side. And because this was the status quo, which is 60 years of the last 62 years, half has been ruled by military and half by these two families. So I came to fight these two families. And this is really what I've, I've done. And they have made so much money out of this that they obviously, clearly someone like me is a threat. And, and that's why this uh, uh, foreign-backed conspiracy involving local players took place. Now, I know that they would uh, try to, my life has had various threats over a period of time. But this time, I found out about this conspiracy, so I went public. The reason, I have no fear of dying, but it, is, it was important to let those guys who were planning, to let them know that I know. Right. It was actually, in a way, a form of protection. You went to Moscow, uh, as it turned out, on the very day that Vladimir Putin, the Russian leader, invaded Ukraine. And you know how controversial the images of you and Putin then immediately became, because it looked like you were almost endorsing what he was doing because you stayed in Moscow and completed your trip. Do you regret now not just leaving immediately you heard that he'd invaded Ukraine? I promise you I had no idea. I arrived the night before. I, I was only there for one night. Next morning when I wake up, I discover that this uh, 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 Ukraine adventure had started. Now it was, uh, we discussed amongst ourselves we realized that there was very poor timing. But at the same time, we realized that we really, it was extremely important for the 220 million people of Pakistan that we actually uh, get these I mean, I understand that. I, I understand. Basically I, I completely understand that you didn't know before you made the trip. I guess the criticism, which may be legitimate, is that once you knew what he'd done, to then stay there and still go through with the meetings that you had planned, sent the world a message that you were not that upset by what he was doing in Ukraine. Countries like us, you know, who have huge populations, and we have, what, 100 million people who are vulnerable right now, so we should actually make policies, have, be, have relationship with everyone, but make policies that benefit our people. No, I understand just that. Just like I what India is doing I understand right that, now. Imran. What I would say back to that is we talked earlier about the higher morality standards in, in the UK when it comes to holding leaders to account. I, I simply would say I don't criticise you for having planned a trip to Moscow, but I think there is legitimate criticism that once you knew what he had done, it illegally invaded a sovereign democratic country, did your moral instinct not tell you that it would be wrong to stay there, that you should have just got straight out of there? Piers, I am against all military operations. I, am, I, I, I uh, marched with, the, uh, with those two million people in, in London against the Iraq war. I constantly was against the Afghanistan war, that there was no military solution. I do not believe what Putin has done of trying to find a military solution in Ukraine. I always believe these are miscalculations. They cause a lot of hardship. And I did give a statement in, uh, when I was in Moscow that military is not, the military actions are not a solution. Unfortunately, we were left at, a, at the, at the time was, either we then, and by the way, the meeting was more or less an hour uh, before, when we discovered that the, uh, the, uh, the, they had invaded Ukraine, it was a question of one hour in between to decide whether we abandon the trip or, 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 or have the meeting with Putin. And so eventually we decided that, look, at this stage, we will fall between two stools. R with Russia, we will break all relationship, leaving at this juncture. And at the, at the same time, you know, is it going to make any difference if we, if Pakistan decides to sort of uh, show, uh, condemn Russian invasion by leaving there? Imran, are, are you in a position now to see what Putin has done in Ukraine and emphatically, publicly denounce it? Any conflict and especially which, where, where you go and any conflict creates bloodshed. But, uh, you know, just like uh, uh, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, God knows how many people died there. And similarly in Ukraine, going into uh, Ukraine, the sort of uh, what we are saying right now, 
I am, I, I'm sure that uh, if uh, President Putin realized what was happening right now, he wouldn't have uh, uh, started this. But do, uh, do you personally condemn the war in Ukraine now, knowing what you've seen in the last three months? Uh, Piers, uh, let, let me just say one thing. I, uh, you know, I am basically anti against all uh, operations. So if you, if you want to uh, ask me a question, uh, do I condemn what is happening in what happened in Iraq? I thought it was wrong, and I would condemn that. I have Afghanistan, U.S. going in and then staying. Okay, once they once they got decimated Al Qaeda in the first year, what was the purpose of staying there for the next 19 years? So it was a useless war. And yes, if, you know, if I would advising President Putin, I would not have gone there. And yes, a war that creates bloodshed. And which, is, which it is, and collateral damage and civilians, yes. Let me ask you about Afghanistan, because from the moment the Americans led the rather dramatic and chaotic and many think disastrous overnight pullout from Afghanistan of its forces, it, it seems the Taliban have basically wrestled back control of the country at record speed and are now going back to running the country how the Taliban did before, notably with severe oppression of women in Afghanistan. What is your view of that? Because you've been broadly supportive, I think, of the Taliban being able to run the country again. But are you supportive of the way they treat women there? Let the people of Afghanistan decide which way they will go. They're strong people. Afghan women are strong. In my opinion, given a chance, you will see them asserting their rights. But the last thing we should do is try to interfere in people of, uh, in the, with the Afghan government. They're very proud people. I know from experience that at any hint of outside interference in their, uh, uh, any country interfering in their way of life, they will, they're very uh, uh, defensive about it. I want to take you back to the, the late 70s, the early 80s, to the genteel world of cricket, uh, where you were a champion cricketer, you were a handsome playboy on the... British social scene with a number of girlfriends to make all of us jealous. Life was a lot easier for you then, a lot more fun, a lot more carefree. You've become a very powerful, uh, very divisive in some ways, uh, political figure now in Pakistan. Do you ever have any regrets? Do you ever wish you hadn't gone down the political path? For me, you know, life is not about... I feel that, uh, you know, people who find the easy way of life. Easy way of life for me, a purposeless existence means nothing to me. I have, you know, I have everything I've ever wanted in life. So for me, the challenge is to actually go back, make Pakistan a welfare state and rule of law. Critical thing is w what you're seeing in Britain is basically rule of law, which is one thing I learned most of all when I went to England as an 18 year old. Imran Khan, it's great to talk to you again. It's been, uh... Well, nearly 50 years since I last talked to you. <laughs> uh, last time I was steaming in Thank at you, you in the Nets at Hove County Cricket Ground. So it's, it's great to catch up with you again. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. My pleasure.